Hi, my name is Manish Gupta. In this video, I'm going to talk about designing a query auto completion system. So let's start with what is a query auto completion system. It's also called as an auto suggest system. The idea is that the user types in a few characters of the intended query. These uh, uh, this this partially typed query is also called as a prefix, and then the user it's shown a series of suggestions, a list of suggestions. It's oftentimes called as a suggestion block, uh, and then the user can actually click on uh, one of those suggestions so as to uh, see the search engine result page, and then the user can continue to interact with the search engine result page. Right. Uh, Sometimes these suggestions could be rich. Uh, for example, they could be showing uh, entities, uh, while uh, most of the times they are basically just completions for the partially typed user prefix. So as we discussed, uh, right here is another example. Uh, the user is typing in a prefix. Uh, the user can continue to keep typing, so the prefix size continue to grow. It starts with the, the first character D, and then the user can type D, E, second character, third character, and so on. So uh, after every character, the user is shown a suggestion block, and the block can, of course, keep changing as the user keeps typing more and more characters. Um, the entire conversation, uh, the, the entire uh, uh, turns between the user and the system is called a conversation, right? Uh, and the user sort of stops typing when they get something that they intended to uh, search for. For example, the user may be searching for deep learning, and uh, then they click on it, and that's where the conversation with the auto suggest system stops. Right? So, in some ways, auto suggest is basically the entry point to search, and therefore, it's a very, very important system. Uh, the uh, building an auto suggest system is pretty complex in nature. Um, let's start with uh, how complex even the search problem is. Right? Let's say there is a user who has who wants to figure out Apple stock price, right, and how it has been varying over time. Uh, he, the user has some need, but then uh, the user sort of translates that need into a query and then types a query. For example, the query is just Apple, and then the, 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 the user puts up that query onto the search engine. Search engine shows some result, and the, the query was Apple, and uh, it's sort of difficult for the search engine to understand what the user is exactly thinking about. Right? The user was searching, was, was thinking to uh, get results about Apple stock price, but what the user gets is basically these, these uh, photos of Apple fruit. Okay. Now, this happens because these queries are pretty ambiguous in nature. So guessing the user intent is oftentimes a difficult problem, and that's called as the intention gap, the gap between what the user intended and, and what, what the user searched for or what was shown to the user. Now, this is the gap for the user queries, and this intent gap is actually very, very complex uh, for autosuggest systems uh, because of the following reasons. Uh, guessing the user intent with very short prefixes, prefixes is very difficult. Even with full queries, the queries are so ambiguous that guessing that intent is difficult, but with short prefixes, it becomes even more difficult. Right? The user has just typed AM, Right now, it could be Amitabh Bachchan, American Airlines, um, Amazon, so many possible intents. Now, how do you rank the right one at the top? Right? And guessing user language using very short prefixes is also difficult. So although the user selects the user language, but uh, in, as, as Bing settings or as any of the you know, search engine settings, the idea is several users are multilingual in nature. So you don't know exactly what query the user might be searching for. What language, sorry, what language the user might be searching in. And then the third thing is that if you guess this intent incorrectly while doing auto suggest, it could lead to several nasty things like defects, misspellings, inappropriate suggestions being shown. Uh, freshness could, could freshness could go for a toss. Local intent, local uh, intent may or may not be satisfied. So all of those issues could happen if you uh, if you have a large intention gap. Right. So the goal in auto suggest system is to do the following: suggest the user's intended query. Right, whatever the user intended for with the minimal input keystrokes. So the less that user types, the better the auto suggest system is, right? If it shows the right results at the top, right? So you also want to do uh, the following that you want to rank the user's intended query right at the top uh, in, in the suggestion block that you're showing. So show the use the user intended query as early as possible in the conversation and right at the top. That's the goal for a good auto suggest system. Now there are several components that one has to be careful about in a, in a, in a, in a query auto suggest system or a query auto complete system, right? And in this video, I'll talk about them one by one. Uh, 
um how do you rank suggestions so and ranking can be um, based on historical popularity of those suggestions or those queries right time, time sensitive uh, it, it needs to be time sensitive it needs to be location sensitive it needs to be personalized as well so all of those factors need to be incorporated for effective ranking uh, then uh, there are these things called as hosting session co-occurrences that we'll talk about in detail. I'll also talk about uh, how do you handle uh, uh, defective queries, so uh, both offline and online. So uh, offline handling of defective suggestions and online handling of defective prefixes. Then we'll talk about uh, non-prefix matches being shown as suggestions. And uh, then we'll talk about uh, how to generate good suggestions when you don't have enough suggestions uh, which users have already queried for. And then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll quickly talk about uh, uh, mobile query auto suggest and enterprise query auto suggest. Right, so that's the agenda more or less for this video. Okay. So let's talk about uh, how do you rank suggestions. The basic, the basic uh, uh, method for ranking suggestions in a good query auto complete system. Okay. So this one is called as most popular completion. Uh, it's also called as the wisdom of the crowd solution. The idea is that you have been running the search engine for a long time. So people have been querying a lot. So they have put up uh, queries, uh, some of those queries several times. Right? So whatever are the popular queries and that start with the currently user type prefix, those are the ones that you will show at the top. That's the basic idea behind this most popular completion method. The idea is that uh, you take the query log so far, you index these historical queries into a tri data structure, so a tri data structure is uh, this data structure which is popularly used to store dictionaries. So you essentially it's, it's like a more like a tree, but then it's a multi way tree, right? Uh, where every node corresponds to a character and then uh, leaf nodes correspond to, a, uh, uh, you know, leaf nodes. If you take the path that corresponds to historical queries. Yeah, so to so store these uh, this tri data structure where historical queries are stored in the try along with their popularity values. When a user uh, prefix comes in, you try to match with the try. And then you rank the uh, you rank the candidate suggestion. So what are the candidates? Candidates are those which basically um, end, uh, uh, which which basically uh, uh, are a subtree, uh, uh, you know, which follows the same path from the root to the subtree node as the currently type prefix. Right? You take that subtree, and everything under that subtree is a candidate. You rank those candidates based on popularity and show them to the users. So while doing so, you have to be also careful about uh, uh, about uh, being uh, specific to the language. So while particular kinds of uh, suggestions may be popular for the same prefix in one language, they may not be very popular in another language. So you have to probably build like language specific tries or somehow incorporate language as an additional signal. Right? Uh, then you have to be also careful about region. Right. So, so for certain prefixes, some suggestions might be more popular in, let's say, US, while they may be less popular in India. Uh, some other suggestions may be more popular in India for the same prefix. So then you have to be also mindful of the region specific popularity. Uh, um, now when I mean popularity, I'm going to look at some historical time window. So people typically look at history uh, from a damping kind of uh, behavior. So the idea is to uh, look at uh, time discounted history, meaning you give more importance to recent history and less importance to the past history. Typically, people use exponential smoothing, so or other exponential dampening, right? Meaning uh, exponentially, past history is given lesser weightage compared to recent history. Uh, however, uh, what is the time window that you care for can also be varied, and that's called as the query log aggregation period. Now, typically people have observed that for shorter length prefixes, a shorter query length period, like a month, is good. But for longer prefixes, uh, a longer query length period is, is better, like an year or so. Yeah, so that's, that's that. Um, lastly, rather than only looking at historical popularity from impressions perspective, that is how many times people queried for some query, you, uh, queried for some suggestion, right? You may also look at uh, clicks. So how many times people queried for something and then also clicked on some result on the search engine result page, right? So you could basically uh, weigh those suggestions higher up, which were queried more frequently and also clicked more frequently. Okay, so, um, but, but then one has to be mindful about using this signal nicely because um, uh, clicks are very sparse in nature. And uh, therefore, it's probably good to use clicks for head kind of queries, but not so good to use them for for longer prefixes, longer prefixes. Okay. Okay. So as we discussed earlier, time sensitivity is a very important thing. 
right so uh, on weekends it it might be good to show uh, disney at the top disney at the top if the user is uh, uh, has typed di as the prefix right but on weekdays maybe it is better to show other things like dictionary or direct tv at the top uh, that is because that uh, uh, that is because uh, the the popularity of these queries uh, typically follows some periodicity some of those queries right for example disney in this case um so in fact queries can be divided into two parts depending on uh, whether they are, can be predictably popular or unpredictably popular so predictably popular queries are queries which are either temporarily recurring or known foreseeable events they are related to known foreseeable events for example temporarily recurring queries are like disney right which recur every every week so basically they are popular on weekends while other temporarily recurring queries could be uh, let's say new year day or christmas which recur every year right Uh, known foreseeable events could be uh, tv episodes or sports events that are going to be uh, you know uh, to be to be starting have a start and the end which is foreseeable which is known uh, beforehand right so for and and if you know these kinds of things the way you can change the auto suggest behavior is uh, by showing um, by showing uh, uh, those queries which could be more popular in that time window right at the top Uh, for example in october if the user has typed ha as the prefix show them halloween at the top while in other periods of the year show harry potter at the top say for example okay uh, however some queries could be unpredictably popular they are related to unforeseen current events uh, right for example in january 2012 sara burke became suddenly very popular uh, compared to the usually popular sara palin palin right uh, now in those cases you may want to sort of show trending uh, queries um, uh, specifically for example when the user has not typed anything right so one has to then be careful about using this burstiness signal compared to using uh, uh, using the popularity signal uh, where the popularity has been aggregated over a longer duration of history of of history right uh, now uh, so so while this is all doable also what makes sense sometimes is to actually not depend just on past popularity but uh, rank candidates based on predicted future popularity okay. for example if you were just depending on 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 past popularity then even on 15th of february you will continue to show valentines day at the top for for a prefix say v right uh but then on 15th of february nobody really cares about valentines day and therefore it could be a good idea to actually uh use time series forecasting methods and forecast that hey on 15th of february valentines day is not going to be popular and therefore not show it at the top right so now there are several time series forecasting methods that could be leveraged for this purpose like arima exponential smoothing and so on okay. that's about time sensitivity uh while ranking suggestions one also needs to be location sensitive in nature okay uh, a simple example is as follows if the user has typed in uni as a prefix and the user is in san diego you would want to show university of california san diego at the top but uh, it's not a good idea to show university of california la right at the top because well the user is not in la the user is located in san diego okay uh, so um, from a location sensitivity perspective in fact there are two types of queries location local interest queries and localizable queries so local interest queries are queries which are important uh, or or rather interesting to only the users at that particular location okay so for example in hyderabad we have something called as shilpa park uh, and uh, shilpa ramam right now you know outside hyderabad people may not care about shilpa ramam right um, it's a, it's a place it's a place in hyderabad similarly you know uh, it, it could be name of some local high school it could be name of uh, some local newspaper it could be the name of some local baseball team and so on okay um, uh, um given queries one can actually try to figure out how local how, how much of a local interest those queries have um in this paper in fact uh, folks discussed how you could basically try to uh, try to model the popularity of queries as as gaussian right and uh, then try to figure out the center of geographic focus for every query so some queries could be global in nature and then they could still be modeled as a gaussian with probability across all the set of regions right but then some queries could be really really local in nature and therefore the gaussian will be very very peaked very very uh, the variance will be very low and uh, it would have a very very uh, uh, focused center focus center so the idea is to determine if the query is tightly concentrated uh, or spread diffusely geog geographically right if it is spread diffusely geographically it's like a global query but it's tightly concentrated it's like a local interest query 
that's how one can figure out local interest queries and model their popularity appropriately uh, to be useful to people in that locality. The other kinds of queries are localizable queries. They are queries which are of uh, generic interest uh, and different users of different uh, uh, locations may issue the same query, but they refer to different things. For example, Pizza Hut, right? If I query for Pizza Hut from Hyderabad, I care about Pizza Hut in Hyderabad. But if I query for Pizza Hut in San Francisco, well, I mean, the user in San Francisco cares for Pizza Hut in San Francisco, not in Hyderabad. Okay. So, uh, and there are interesting uh, simple heuristics to find which queries are localizable versus not. So, Typically, a localizable query is very likely to appear as a subquery in other queries. Right? For example, car rental, California, car rental, New York, car rental, India, and so on. Okay? So, so one can figure out these localizable queries and local interest queries and rank them appropriately in an autosuggest system. Uh, yet another um, uh, sort of perspective of ranking is personalization. So personalization with respect to previous queries being put up by the user in the same session or uh, across sessions, right? Or personalization with respect to what the user has been browsing for. The several signals that one can leverage to show better auto suggest. Okay? Let's say, let's consider this user who is more of a books kind of a user. She's searching for books, right? This is a session history, right? And then she starts searching for the great. You would want to show other books which start with the great. Similarly, if you take another user, so this user uh, basically has a session history of and which tells you that she is interested in movies. Right? So now if she's searching for the great, you would want to show her other movies which start with the great. This is about the short term history. Now consider another user for whom you have long term history and you also have short term history, uh, session history, right? So if she has been long term a movies user, but in the short term, she's actually planning a trip to China. Uh, as is evident from her uh, session history, you would want to show um, uh, uh, queries like uh, the Great Wall of China to her in the dropdown when she's searching, when she has typed the prefix the Great. Okay? This is called personalization, and uh, of course, personalization can play a significant role between a so so auto system and a really awesome auto system. Okay? Now, besides these, there are several other factors uh, when you want to rank uh, queries uh, or suggestions in an auto system. One of the factors is called ghosting. So without ghosting, autosuggest looks like this, but with ghosting, autosuggest looks like this. The difference is, is what you see here in the query box, right? So what is ghosting? Ghosting is auto-completing a search recommendation by highlighting the suggested text in line. When you're super confident that the first suggestion that you're coming up with is the one that the user would want to click in, click on, right? You can actually sort of, uh, you know, using this uh, user interface gimmick, uh, you know, sort of complete it uh, and show the completed one with a slightly different background. Uh, in the search box itself. Okay. People have seen that ghosting helps increase the engagement of the auto suggest uh, of, of the auto suggest system. Right? Uh, so users are 6.18% uh, more likely to click on these offered suggestions. Uh, also, they are 4%, 4.5% more likely uh, to to not type in misspelled suggestions. Right. So so 4.42% times less misspelled suggestions you will see if you basically just do. Um, uh, you know, the costing thing. Okay. Uh, another signal that you could leverage for better ranking of suggestions is uh, called as uh, uh, context sensitive auto suggest. And the idea is to leverage a whole bunch of session, session co occurrence information. So if you have been running a search in for a long period of time, you can analyze previous sessions of users and try to find those pairs of queries which co occur a lot. Yeah. So you have a pair Q1, Q2, such that Q2 is queried very frequently after Q1. Okay. Uh, let's say if you have those pairs, and let's say if this user has just typed in Richard Nixon uh, and uh, the previous query, right? And now the user has typed in a partial prefix AM, AM, right? Uh, what should you show at the top? Uh, analysis of past sessions tells you that the people who type Richard Nixon type American presidents a lot of times. And therefore, if the user has typed in AM and the previous query that you type was Richard Nixon, you would show American presidents at the top. Okay. Uh, uh, now, clearly, this could be this could uh, very easily get into sparsity issues. How many times people would repeat pairs of queries, right? So therefore, uh, people may not want to just do syntactic kind of matches, uh, but also do semantic kind of matches. For example, if the user has typed in uh, flights from uh, San Francisco to LA, and then the user has typed in American Airlines, right? A uh, um, lot of times, right? And then the current user has typed in flights from San Francisco to LA, and the user has typed in uh, uh, C, right? 
or CO, right? They didn't type in AM. So if they type in AM, you could show American Airlines, but they typed in CO, what do you do? Well, you could still show Continental because semantically Continental and American Airlines are pretty similar to each other. And that helps you do this completion by still depending on session co-occurrence information, okay? Well, so that's that. Um, as we discussed so far, uh, our autosis system depends heavily on previously queried uh, queried things, right? So therefore, it depends uh, heavily on uh, queries that uh, previous users have typed. But the previous users could have done uh, spell errors, right? If they might have typed nasty things, offensive things. They might have typed uh, uh, spelling mistakes, uh, and therefore. If you are using those things to populate your try and show them as suggestions, you may end up showing things of this kind. Partial suggestions, would you rather? Now, what is would you rather? You would want to show full suggestion, right? Or even URLs with the broken spellings and or broken links and so on, right? Uh, just because some other users queried for them earlier, right? So the idea is to actually somehow handle these defects, detect these defects from your query log and remove them before you actually populate your try. Right? Don't show partial suggestions or offensive ones or spelling mistakes or gibberish, some random uh, you know, typed stuff. Right? You don't want to show all of that. Therefore, one has to have a classifier to remove those before you populate your crap. Now, even if you can handle uh, you know, all of those nasty suggestions, what you also want to do is to handle nasty prefixes that users have been typing. Right? So sometimes people could uh, make mistakes while typing prefixes themselves. Mm, fat finger problem or, you know, um, people are just typing too fast, so therefore they could make those small little errors. Okay, so what you could do is to have some system which can take your uh, uh, mistyped prefix. For example, the user is typing WATS. They, they are intent to typing WhatsApp, but then they type WATS. So then somehow you should be able to auto correct it to WHATS and then search with that auto corrected prefix onto the try. Okay, now this is possible. If you have some conversion rules, for example, one of the conversion rules could be WAT to WHAT. Okay, you can learn such conversion rules in various languages and store them as conversion tables. Uh, now, you could, of course, uh, search for things using WAT on your try, but uh, try may not give you a lot of good things. Right? It will give you things, but not with very good scores. So in that case, what you could do is to Apply a conversion rule and then, uh, of course, with a cost and then search for suggestions on the track. If these suggestions, uh, uh, which start with WHAT, uh, seem to be really, really awesome and interesting, then you might want to actually apply and then show results after applying the conversion rule. But if you see that even after applying the conversion rule, you don't get very good suggestions from the try, then you may avoid applying that particular conversion rule. So that's that. So the key idea is uh, that uh, you can jump to a different node in your search try by paying a cost dictated by the conversion table. And you know if that cost is okay, you may want to bear it. If not okay, then you may want to continue without doing any conversion or any spell correction for the prefix. Right? So the idea is yes, you have to handle uh, misspellings both offline, uh, you know, by by correcting suggestions, full suggestions, as well as online by correcting short prefixes. Another aspect of a good autosay system is non-prefix matching suggestions. So far, we have talked about suggestions which exactly match the prefix that the user had typed. Right? But sometimes it may be actually OK to show suggestions which don't exactly match with the prefix that the user has typed. So for example, user may be typing in shrimp dip rec. Right? Now, you may want to show shrimp dip recipes, and that's OK. right? But then you may not have more suggestions. So if you want to get more suggestions, maybe you can actually start showing suggestions like shrimp uh, uh, PNL tip recipe, right? Where you have actually introduced an extra word in between, or you know, show this kind of a suggestion which has those keywords the user typed in shrimp and dip, right? But it has many other words like recipe, appetizer, uh, chipotle, and so on, okay? which all make sense. Right? So that's that. Now, to be able to support such things, you need an inverted index. So here is another example. So somebody has searched for marriage geo, and you may not have very good suggestions to complete after that. And therefore, it's OK to actually show other suggestions, uh, other suggestions which, uh, uh, which are seemingly better, although they may not be exactly prefix matching, like Georgia marriage records or Atlanta Georgia marriage records and so on. OK, so um, you know, um, prefix matching, non-prefix matching is all good. They're all supported by the try data structure. If the user is typing something, uh, a long prefix, for which there is nothing that matches from the try, what do you do? Such kinds of cases are called tail cases, 
And in such kind of scenarios, you may want to actually generate suggestions. You could leverage the recent advancements in natural language generation thanks to deep learning models and therefore generate those suggestions. Right? Uh, uh, and the motivation is that a significant proportion of queries issued daily have never been seen previously. And therefore, your tries are not going to be helpful there. And in that case, you could basically generate suggestions to improve the recall in the tail using deep learning natural language generative mechanisms or even using uh, non deep learning mechanisms like finite state automata, finite state transducers. Uh, you could also use uh, word based engram models rather than just character based uh, uh, character based tries. And then you could use word based engram models with back off so that if the user has typed in a long prefix with like 10 words, maybe you just care for the last three words, you know, ignoring the previous context of the first seven words, and then just search on a word in gram based try. So there are several ways of sort of handling such tail queries. Of course, while doing so, one has to be careful about several issues like handling latency. Remember, AutoSuggest is supposed to be a very high throughput system, so it has to incur as less latency as possible, you know. You, while generating suggestions, you want to avoid all of these kinds of things. No partial suggestions, no offensive ones, no hallucinations, grammatically incorrect suggestions. You don't want to have all of those nasty things, right? Uh, you may want to personalize while generating suggestions, right? Um, so all of those things have to be kept in mind when you are trying to generate suggestions. Lastly, let me talk about uh, autosuggest uh, from uh, a perspective of different endpoints. So typically when people think about autosuggest, they think about web search, right? But autosuggest is present on so many portals. For example, when you do desktop search, there's autosuggest. When you do search on mobile, there's autosuggest. When you try to do search in enterprise systems, for example, um, intra company uh, search or Yammer search and so on, there's autosuggest. So autosuggest on all of those systems has to be slightly different. For example, on mobiles, uh, you could make use of uh, information about installed apps to come up with very, very interesting suggestions. Now, if the user recently installed real major app on their mobile phone and the user has uh, just uh, typed in, let's say real or RE, you know that the user may be more interested in actually, uh, you know, uh, the real Madrid as a suggestion, right? So you could make use of that context, which is available specifically on mobile phones. On enterprise systems, uh, several things could differ. For example, on enterprise systems, authentication plays a major role. So you may not want to uh, use query log uh, uh, based on queries done by the CEO of the company, right? Uh, CEO of the company does very, very sensitive queries. So maybe you don't want to show completions based on the query log obtained from the CEO of the company, right? Uh, but then at the same time, you could be very, very uh, expressive in terms of the kind of uh, the suggestion block that you show. For example, you could show uh, you could cluster suggestions. You could uh, also show suggestions uh, which don't match with the prefix at all, but uh, well, they could still be very meaningful. So this is basically something for a banking customer, right? Uh, the enterprise search inside a banking uh, scenario for, for banking scenarios. Right? Uh, so so that's that. So you could cluster suggestions. Uh, you could actually incur a little higher latency. So on web search, typically latency is a very very complex problem, right? I mean, you have to ensure that you show suggestions within a few hundred milliseconds. But uh, on enterprise search, you can be a little relaxed in terms of latency, show more diverse search engine results, cluster the results, but at the same time, you have to be careful about, uh, about authentication. You can't be uh, you know, aggregating query log across the entire company and then showing suggestions, but uh, you can probably aggregate uh, query logs uh, uh, for a small group of uh, workers or employees close to this employer. Uh, and then show the suggestions based on their query log aggregation, right? So uh, in, in short, uh, the considerations that one might have to care for across the different endpoints may be different, um, uh, and and uh, may, be, may be different when you are when you are building a query auto system for those endpoints. So at the end of this video, in summary, we sort of talked about uh, how do you rank suggestions by keeping most popular completion in mind, being time sensitive and location sensitive as well. And lastly, also personalizing the suggestions to reduce ambiguity and the intention gap. We talked about ghosting. We talked about using session co-occurrence data for uh, more effective uh, ranking. Right? We talked about how you should handle defects before you put suggestions into your try, or also how do you handle defects in the uh, in the prefix that the user is currently typing in, so online spell correction in some ways. Right? We talked about ways to enhance your query autosuggest system by doing non-prefix matching based recommendations. 
or also uh, even generating suggestions which the users have never typed so far using recent advancements in uh, deep learning or even finite state transducers. Lastly, we talked about considerations that you might need to keep in mind when designing auto-suggest systems for different endpoints like mobile phones, enterprise scenarios, and so on. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, please do like it and, uh, and subscribe to this channel. Um, if you would like to connect with me, that's my LinkedIn. And uh, lastly, that's my homepage as well. Thank you so much.